What up, players? It's Wobot's Tay up in this mud. Today we're gonna finish our giant honking cannon. And um, I let the wash dry, and now we're gonna get started painting up the highlights. So, first thing you're gonna need is good old dwarf bronze. We're gonna do a very light dry brushing all over the place. So, we're gonna just get a little bit of this paint on our brush and wipe most of it off. Very lightly bring that shine back onto the surface. And as you can see, I'm really attacking it from this one angle because that's the angle somebody is looking down at your model that's gonna shine the most you're off to the side as if the light was coming down from the top and to the side okay if you want to do any more you could use some uh, hot highlights with chain mail <coughs> <coughs> um, but I'm gonna let that be for now then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hawk turquoise and we're going to paint up the little uh, crystal gems that we've got hanging on either side You can see the driver right next to my uh, station here. Now we're going to take that hot turquoise and we're going to use it to paint the vertigris. So to do this, you water down your hot turquoise a whole lot. really watered down and then you just find the places that you want to paint it so I'm going to go around the rim too much The more kind of a haphazard, the better. So if it's thicker in some areas and not as thick in others, that'll really help. And then it's really up to you how much and where you want your vertigris to go. So I'm going to start by painting it here in the sides of these murals. Oh. 
kind of want to know, um, I'm kind of curious what the, the sculptors who did the work on these models, what they were thinking when they were making these murals, when they were designing these. Whoever uh, sculpted this model it would be interesting to find out because some of them are very, very interesting. We've got some standard ones that really don't have much of a story. It just has like, oh look, here's a comet falling among some mountains. But then you've got some, some of them are very strange looking. The uh, scenery depicted and all that looks very, uh, very interesting. And then when you're done painting the vertigris here on the sides, you can move on to putting them in other areas as well. Like within the murals, possibly. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really up to you, but I think it's this is really a fun, cool way to add a little bit of color to your, to the bronze work. And here in the, uh, in the back where you've got these comets with the, with the maw, the ogre, great maw uh, motif on it. It's, it's another good place to put. In Hawaii, we don't have that much oxidized copper here, so it's. It's um, it's fun for me to actually have to to paint this kind of stuff because we don't really see too much of this. Um, but at least I don't where I am. I don't I don't really see too much of it. So it's really a fun experience to to paint up. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and then. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of highlighting to the two totems, but other than that <coughs> If you want to paint in some some of the verdigris details to the murals, then I'm going to find some some pieces where I'd like to like um, For example here Need these trees Yeah, some of these are really interesting like this you can tell is a army of men marching and right under it is uh, or right above it is like thunder and clouds and here you have like what looks like a kingdom among the mountains which I assume was the the kingdom of the sky titans before the ogres overthrew them and then down one you've got the men marching and attacking and um, You've got a pile of gold and a treasure and a flag and a sword and then a, a, what looks like a giant double doors to a castle, which I assume is like the home of the the home of the um, Sky Titans. And then down here is just a weird-looking graveyard with stars in the night sky above it. So. <coughs> would be really interested to know like what the what the story behind each of these murals is but that is a discussion for another day I'm gonna finish doing some vertigris work in here and uh, when I'm done we'll see you for the last part of this video <laughs> okay so after we've given our vertigris some time to dry what we're gonna do now is we are going to paint some rust onto the silver parts so the color that I've gotten to use for this is vermin brown it's got a nice red brown color to it that is gonna go I think pretty nicely alongside the kind of reddish brown of the of the dwarf bronze so just like the vertigris you really want to water water the color down 
then you get only a little bit onto your your brush and then you just want to focus on the rivets so this is going to give a nice really rusted look to your uh, your metal and you can also put it into the um, into the cuts in the silver, like here, here, here. Yeah, you don't want it to look too gloopy and thick anywhere, but around the rivets is like the perfect place. And uh, here's a little trick that I learned. Um, just like the blood splatter, you can have rust streaks. Do them vertically like that from top to bottom. It would look like there is rust streaking down the cannon. If you want to go darker, scorched brown will work also. Um, you could also do bestial brown would be another alternative. But I think it's a nice it's a nice color to use. Vermin brown is a nice color. You don't have to also only stick to, to the rivets. Like, let me show you, you can just take your watered down vermin brown and just paint it across to get a very rusted, stained look to your plates, just like these two pieces right there. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to paint on some ice blue <coughs> onto our two little hanging pendants. And this final step, we're taking our ice blue and we're going to highlight up the little mystical crystals. After that, we are going to add some Space Wolves Gray as really fine line highlights to pick out the shape and the dimension of these crystals. In my Savage Orc list, my models are adorned with these with these blue blue crystals as well, and I think it's a it's an interesting different kind of you know thing rather than coloring them as as rock gray rock and gray stone so I don't even know if they were in focus for that but th that's how it's gonna look <coughs> if you want to go the traditional route and just make them gray then all you have to do is have um, some codex gray and then highlight up with fortress gray it'll give you the same effect um, but it'll be for uh, it, it'll make it look like a, a rock totem. Just gonna paint one final thing of hot turquoise vertigris right here, and voila! You can act. You can actually um, paint on as much or as little. You can highlight as much or as little as you want. You can paint on as much or as little vertigris or rust as you want. Um, I'm gonna make it look like this cannon is is pretty old with the amount of vertigris on it, but still has a little bit of a luster, a little bit of a shine to it. The um, the rust on the plate looks really nice. Check that out. Once it's dried, the vermin brown creates really nice looking um, dirty streaks, and then the bad black dried on the plate as well. Makes it look really nice. So, thanks for watching. Join us next time for uh, the next part of the tutorial, which is going to be painting on these uh, stone horn tusks that go on, that attach to the side of the wagon and to the side of the cannon. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next one.